so we will start demand integration so before that we need to know certain terms associated with that so first of all we will take the integral to be definite and proper note the function should be bounded and the domain of definition that is where the function is defined should be closed interval closed intervals so this is the condition to be satisfied we are taking proper integral and the function is bounded and the domain that a to b uh, that should be closed interval now partition of closed intervals what is the meaning of that so suppose you have some a to b closed integral or let's say it is 0 to 1 so you can divide that interval like into as many intervals as you like let's say if i need two intervals that means i'll bring in one point and if i need intervals of equal length so this point is going to be half then how i will denote the partition then the partition is nothing but the set we have to write the points 0 1 by 2 1 like that so that is called partition if you have let's say a to b and if you need infinite number of points in that partition then how you can divide you can divide it like 1 by n form okay 1 1 by uh, like if it is 0 to 1 you can divide Zero then uh, one by n format you can divide one by n two by n three by n like that. Now here if I need let's say n number of points, so I will keep this as x zero then some length I will take if I need of equal length then this length let's say some h I'm taking this will be x one then the same length x two so like that I'll go on. making division and finally let this be xn that means we have how many intervals we have n intervals and how many points are there n plus 1 points okay here you see you have two intervals and you have three points in the partition set so you can denote it as x0 x1 x2 like that up to xn So that is the meaning of partition. N intervals and n plus one points. You can write n sub intervals and n plus one points. Not necessary that that uh, interval length should be the same. Yeah. Can you tell me the definition of Riemann integrals? Yeah, yeah, sure. We are coming to that only. These are the terms we should know before learning that. Okay. Like there are a lot of terms associated with Riemann integration, so we say that. f is riemann integral if it satisfies some conditions so these terms are the terms related to that definition only we are coming to that 
So, and we denote the intervals in this way. Like if you have x0, x1, x2, xn, so you can denote i1 as x0 to x1. Then interval 2, sub interval x1 to x2. So like that you can define and ir is equal to xr minus 1 to xr. This is the r sub interval. Now we will define something. This is called the R sub interval. Now it is not necessary that this interval length should be the same. Okay, it can be different also. So we will give some name for that uh, interval length. Like for example, we are calculating x1 minus x0. So denote it as delta x1. That is x1 minus x0. Then like x2 minus x x2 minus x1. That is delta x2. So like that, delta xr is equal to xr minus xr minus 1. So that is the interval length. The r sub-interval length you can see. Now, note that if P is any partition of closed interval A to B, always when we talk about Riemann integral, that domain of definition should be closed interval. Then, the P will be contained inside A to B. And that is true. So P is a partition and that is a set. Set of what? Set of the points. Okay. Uh, the interval points. And that will be contained inside this because only this interval we are doing the partition. So that is contained inside that. Now next definition is norm of partition. Norm of partition P of A to B. What is the meaning of norm of partition? So it is given like this and also like this and that is defined as you find the maximum of the interval length, sub-interval length. That is this delta x1, delta x2, so like that, delta xn. If there are any intervals, all the n intervals, you find this uh, that sub interval length and take the maximum of that, and that is called the norm of the partition. Uh, can you try to find what will be summation delta xr? R is equal to 1 to n. What will be this? Xn minus. It is Xn minus X naught, or you can say B minus A. That is the interval length only. So this will be uh, nothing but delta X1, delta X2, like that, delta Xn. 
and this is see x1 minus x2 this is x2 minus x1 so like that it will be this is xn minus xn minus 1 so all these will cancel and what is remaining xn minus x0 and that is b minus a and that is the same as the length of the interval that a to the interval length That is clear. Now, next definition is refinement of a partition. You have noted this down. Yes, Do you know what is the meaning of refinement of a partition? Refining something means what? Refinement of a partition means suppose you have some partition, you add more points into that. Okay, to so that division, so you add little more points. So that is called refining the partition. So, like if you have the 0 to 1 interval and you uh, divide into two intervals. So what is the partition set? It is 0, 1 by 2 and 1. Now you need a uh, little more refinement of this partition. So that means you add little more points to it. So that is divided again. So it is like this. Now uh, here I am going to divide like 1 by 4 then 3 by 4. So I have now divided it into four intervals. That is like refining this thing. And this is, let's say, some P star. And that will contain 0, 1 by 4, then 1 by 2, and 1. Oh, sorry. 3 by 4, and 1. Okay? That is the meaning of refinement. Let P and P star be two partitions. Of A B such that now this is the P and I can say this is the refinement of P and you can see that the P is subset of P star. Then the P star is called the refinement of P. So always the P will be subset of P star. Proper subset of P star. Then P star is defined then. Of P, then P star has at least one additional point than P. At least one additional point than P. And that is why they are saying it is a, a proper subset of P is a proper subset of P star. And how can you relate the norm? Can you tell me norm of P star and the norm of P? What will be the relation between them? Norm of P star greater than equal to norm of P. 
norm of p star is actually less than or equal to and why what is the norm now we take root ha huh? in norm we take root right norm we will take uh, that uh, delta delta xr maximum we have to take this is how we define the norm right maximum of delta x1 delta x2 like that so that uh, interval sub interval length we are checking and the maximum we are taking now the refinement means what we are adding more points so that means that interval length is going to decrease right you got that point yes 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 yeah so this is the relation And next point is this side. Let F be bounded. On A to B, and let M is the supremum of F of X on A to B. And small m small m be the infimum of the complex on A to B. Then m is less than or equal to f of x. Less than or equal to capital M. So this is the condition. Uh, if M is the infimum, small m is the infimum, capital M is the supremum. That means this condition will be satisfied. And we are saying that and let capital M R equal to supremum of f of x on I R interval, and small m R is equal to infimum of f of x on ir then we have the relation the m less than or equal to mr less than or equal to capital mr less than or equal to capital m So can you see that? Like suppose you have a function in this way, it can be any way. Okay. So I'm just taking this function. This is a, and this is b. Now this is the small m, and this is the capital M. Now they are taking. Now they are telling you take any interval. So this is x zero, x n. So x one, x two, x three like that. You have different. Or you take any xr. Let's say this is some xr, uh, not xr. Sorry, ir interval. Ir I'm taking, which is xr minus one to xr. Now in this interval, you can check the uh, supremum and infimum. So if the small mr is the infimum and capital mr is the supremum, so this will be the infimum. This is the small mr, and this will be the supremum. And you can see that the M is less than or equal to M R, less than or equal to capital M R, less than or equal to capital M. In any way, the function might look like that condition will always be satisfied. Why? Because the small M and capital M R over the A to B whole interval, the supremum and infimum. So obviously, if you take any interval in between. And its supremum and infimum, so it will hold this relation. Small m less than or equal to m r less than or equal to capital m r less than or equal to capital m. You can take like uh, any shape it can be. Okay, let's say it's like this. So 
this will be the small m and oh, sorry, this, the, this will be the capital M. That is the minimum large minimum. You take some interval. So any interval you take that uh, let's say this is that interval. I'm going to choose. So in this interval, which is the uh, maximum? So this is the capital M R, and the minimum is this. So in any type of function, it is satisfied. Okay, that is one property. Now, next definition is upper and lower Darboxa. So, what is meant by upper and lower Darboxa? So, let F from A to B to R be a bounded function. We have a partition x is 0 equal to a, then x1, x2, like that, xn is equal to b. B the partition of a b. Now let capital M be the supremum or the complex on AB and small m be the infimum of f of x on AB. And we have uh, the interval IR, which is like XR minus 1 to XR. And delta XR, we know it is XR minus XR minus 1. And like the previous we defined, MR is equal to supremum of f of x on ir and small mr equal to the infimum on the ir. Okay. Now how we are going to define the upper dark box sum. So it is defined as the upper dark box sum of the function f over the partition t. So like that you have to read the upper dark box sum of function f over the partition t. And that is defined as the summation mr delta x r is equal to 1 to m. And that is m1 delta x1 plus m2 delta x2 like that till m n delta x n. You can see it graphically also, but here uh, what you can understand the upper dark box sum is nothing but you uh, take the inter uh, you take the supremum in the given interval like MR and multiply it with the delta XR. So that we have to take the summation from R is equal to 1 to n. So M1 delta X1, M2 delta X2 like that till M N delta XN. So we are uh, always remember that remaining integral means we are trying to talk about the area. Okay, so upper dark box sum is defined like this. Now let's see using the graph what that means. You have noted this upper portion. Yes, ma'am. 